Hi guys. In this video I'd like to show you how to use an SVG color font to create a logo design in Affinity Designer. Now the trick here is of course that Affinity Designer does not yet recognize SVG fonts. So that's a bit of a problem. But there is a way around it. So let's explore it. And what you will learn First, let me stress that Affinity Designer doesn't yet handle SVG fonts, so be under no illusions. But you still can use the font, it just won't appear the same. What we have to do is use the font, but modify it to suit our needs by hand, which is not really difficult. Now you'll need the following resources in order to complete this circle logo design. A font called Blue Sky SVG font, and a font called Robinson font. Now you can use other fonts. Um, this is, they're not rigidly stuck to these ones, it's just that these ones look really nice. They're available from Envato and the link is in the description if you want to go down that road. How to create a new document and set up a grid. So let's get right into it. Create a new document and enter 850 in the width and height boxes. That's pixels by the way. Select RGB for the color mode and set the DPI to 72. Then tap Create Document. Enable the grid view here, View Show Grid and the Snap to Grid, View Snapping Manager, Snap to Grid. This makes sure that things line up correctly for you and with a grid, when you enlarge it slightly on the iPad, of course this is where we're doing this, it will be easy to get things in line. Enter 5 in the grid line for every box and 1 in the divisions box. It will make your work easier. Pick the type tool and select the blue sky SVG font and set the size to 200 pixels. Simply click on your artboard and type in the word silky piece of text. In this design I've pulled out a white background rectangle to make it easy to see what you're doing. And you can see it there in the... Um, in the layers list, there's a white rectangle at the bottom. We'll convert that to curves later, but for now, let's just get on with it. Now adjusting the text to look alike. When you first apply the text, it will look flat and really boring, and it will be black. We have to fix that because the SVG part of the font doesn't work. First, change the colour to a bright blue. RGB 88, 158, 255 for the colors. They're the ones I used anyway. You can change that to suit whatever you like. Now apply a linear, linear gradient to that, slightly left biased, using the fill tool. Now you can see on the horizontal line there there's a tiny little mark just under the top part of the S. Now that's how I've moved the bar towards the left. So it's slightly, the clear part is slightly biased towards the left. And that's fairly straightforward. Next, apply a 3D context to the text to lift it from the flat plane. Radius of 40 pixels, which also gives a depth of 40, and 86% opacity, which is not too bad. Now you can see on the right hand side, I've got the switch on for 3D, and I've also got the switch on for bevel and emboss. And that's our next step. Select Bevel Emboss from the FX toolbar and apply that inner and very slight increase in radius and depth. So it's only a 0.4 pixel radius on, of type inner. That gives a depth of 0.4 pixels to that as well. And the azimuth is 66.7, so if you've got something slightly different, just adjust them to that. This gives it a nice sort of three-dimensional look. Make sure that your piece of text stays selected and open the transform panel and select alignment options. Now you can see down the bottom there, you can see alignment at the top of the right hand panel there. And align vertically, distribute horizontally, align vertically is selected the middle one and align horizontally is selected the center in the top one. They easily move your selection to the center of your artboard or workspace. You don't have to try and guess where the center line is. Now, we're going to create the main, <coughs> excuse me, the main logo shape. Pick the ellipse tool and create a 350 pixel circle. 
the grid and the snap to grid feature will make it a lot easier. Use the transform tool to get the shape the exact size that you want. In other words, with that shape selected, you can go to the transform tool and type in 350 for the height and width, and there's your perfect circle. Or you can drag it out using hold this button, hold that button, do the other thing, but I always find it easier and much more secure to use the transform tool. But that's a matter of choice. Now, open the fill tool panel and make sure that your shape stays selected. Fill it with the linear gradient shown in the following image. That's top to bottom, vertically. It's a linear gradient vertically. Now, the top selection is 39, 170, 225, which is a lighter blue. And the bottom selection is 38, 34, 98, a slightly darker selection. And that will give a nice little transition across that blue circle, leaving the center point at the center. Now center this circle using the same horizontal align center and vertical align center buttons from the align panel. Then send it behind the text. So you don't want that blue circle over the top of the text, you want it behind the text. And that's easy enough. You've got your orders buttons up the top there so you can send it behind. That's easily done. Or if you want to be um, Long-winded about this, go to the Layers panel and drag the layer down so it's below the text. Now, the backing circle. Make sure that your circle stays selected and add a second circle by using the Duplicate tool. Simply duplicate the circle. Select the new duplicate and drag it below that other layer or send it behind, whichever you find easiest. Set its color to black. That's RGB 000. Lower the opacity to 30%. Now you won't be able to see it, but it's behind the blue circle now, which is where it should be. And you can see over the right hand side there, there's a black ellipse with FX in the bar, and that's behind the circle. Now we've got to adjust that slightly. Select the new duplicate, and drag it below the other layer, as I just mentioned. Set its color to black, 000, lower the opacity to 30%. Now you can see that clearly there because I've got the blue circle, blue circle turned off at the moment. Just untick the layer box and the blue circle will be completely out of the way. And you can see what you're doing. Now you can see that I've got Gaussian blur turned on. That's our next step. Go to transform. Drag the circle down the x-axis 40 pixels. So you're, you're going down the vertical line 40 pixels. So the black circle will be popping out beneath the blue circle, which of course you can turn back on now. Go to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and enter a 15 pixel radius. Now the effect should be the same. You've got, in your layers panel, you've got silky, you've got a blue ellipse, you've got a black ellipse, that's had its transparency reduced and its Gaussian blur applied and then the white rectangle. Fairly straightforward. You should be fairly familiar with that by now. Now we've got to provide some slight differences. Be careful here. Make sure that your original blue circle is selected. Not the dark one underneath, the original blue. Select the stroke. Now you know how to select the stroke in when you Click on the color circle, top right hand side there, it'll show you a complete circle or it'll show you an open circle. The open circle is the stroke and from there you can adjust the width of the stroke. Set its color to white, that's 255, 255, 255 and increase the weight, as you can see there, to 10 pixels. Check the align stroke to the outside button. See the align stroke there? You've got all those and you can select it to the outside which is where it puts it very nice so now you've got a white circle all the way around the blue circle created by expanding the stroke slightly now select your silky piece of text add a new duplicate what wait add add a new duplicate okay add a new duplicate and drag it below the text layer 
So you've got a duplicate below your original text layer. Select the duplicate, set the color to white, then select the path. That's your outside stroke. Enter a 10 pixel offset, set the joins to round, and the alignment to outside. You can see in the advanced tab there, you've got caps, join, and alignment, and the word silky now appears like that, sitting underneath your original silky layer. If you mess it up, just step back until you get it right. Now you can see the top layer, which is the original silky, the second layer, which is the one you've just made, the blue ellipse, the black ellipse and the white rectangle. Everything in its place. How nice is that? That didn't take long, did it? But we're continuing on. Now, create the text effect. This is a tricky one again. Select your silky piece of text and add a duplicate. Again, yes, another duplicate. You can see it in the layers panel. Blue, very pale blue-white and the black duplicate. Select the copy and fill the resulting shape with black and then move the resulting shape behind your silky text. Lower its opacity to 75% and change the blending mode to soft light. So you've got that sitting there. It's behind the word silky and you can see it popping out there because we've moved it slightly. The opacity is only 75%. Now, mask the text. Select the new black text layer and drag it halfway down into the blue circle. So previously, and I can't go back with this now, of course, but the black silky word was just above the blue circle. You had blue, white and blue, and the black. Now, you've also, and I forgot to mention this, terrible, terrible, but the black word silky, I lowered it vertically by about 40 pixels. And you can adjust that to suit, but you don't want the whole word coming out. You can just see there where the red arrow is pointing that it's coming out below the S. Now, you drag that black silky halfway into the blue ellipse and the blue ellipse will mask the outside bit so that all you can see is the inside blue bit with the black outline which is just what you want. You may have to fiddle with that a little bit to get it right but that's what it looks like when it's finished. Now we've got to move towards the end. Using the ellipse tool, create a 260 pixel circle and center it using the same horizontal align and vertical align center buttons from the align panel. Oh, easy. The appearance attributes for this new shape don't matter, as you're simply going to use this shape as a path to type on. Make sure that this new shape stays selected and select artistic text. Tap the edge of the circle and it will change to a blank circle and the text handles, the little green and red triangles, will appear. You can see them there, the arrows pointing kind of at them. Select the Robinson font. Select the Robinson font and set the size to 32 pixels and the tracking to 200. Simply click on the edge of your selected circle and add the words hyphen Taylor Salon hyphen text. Set its color to white and drag the text as shown in the image using the red and green triangles, very fiddly job, until your Taylor Salon text sits on the top and is kind of aligned and you can see it aligned center on that rectangle that's um, showing there. Now that's a little bit of a fiddly job, but you will get it. It's worth, it's worth doing. Now, create the second text element, very much a similar thing. Using the ellipse tool, create a 280 pixel circle, another one, yes, and center it. Again, don't bother with the appearance attitudes of this shape. Make sure it stays selected 
switch to the type on a path action and lower the tracking to 100 in the character panel. Remember the other one was 200, this one's 100. Click on the edge of your selection and add the established 2021 text or ESTD. Move that center bracket to the inside of your circle to move your text to the inside. Drag the text as shown in the image until you've got it lined up. Remember it's those green and red triangles being pushed around that put the text where you want it. That's a real fiddle, but after a few times you get used to it. Now, creating a stylized needle. We're getting right towards the end now. Pick the rectangle tool and create an 870 pixel square. Center it and then fill it with the linear gradient shown below. Going top to bottom. Now the top is paler than the bottom. 147, 140, 152 is the bottom. 230, 231, 232 is the top color. Don't be tempted to use the gray scale. It, it has the potential to mess up your color scheme in the rest of the document. Now, create the needle. Pick the rectangle tool and create a 15 by 530 pixel shape and fill it with white. Add a vertical guide and drag it so it's at the midpoint of the rectangular shape. Now add guides and display guides. Drag that guide so it's at the center of that rectangular shape. Next, convert the rectangle to curves. We need to create the needle point. And you can see I've already started there. It's not a pure rectangle, obviously. But this is really easy to do, and it's how you can adjust any sort of rectangle or shape that you like. Convert it to curves, and it's yours to move around with the node tool as you like. Having converted the shape to curves, select the node tool and pull in the lower edges so they meet on the vertical line. That's why that vertical line is there. Fill the needle shape with white. That's fairly straightforward. If you can't get that right the first time, fiddle with it until you do. Enlarge your screen like I've got there so you can see exactly what you're doing. Next, select the top two nodes and tap Smooth from the Context toolbar. You can see the red arrow pointing down to the Smooth option. This gives the needle a nice smooth rounded top end. Once you deselect that, that top end will become visible. You are almost complete. Needle now looks like this. Rounded top end, nice sharp point. But there's a little way to go yet. Using the rectangle tool, create a 5 by 40 pixel shape and place it as shown in the image. You can see I've got it quite enlarged there. Make sure it stays selected and then convert to curves. Select this rounded rectangle along with that white shaped needle and tap the subtract button from the geometry panel in the edit studio. And that, were, that actually subtracts it from the white needle and you can see through to the grey background again or whatever colour background you've chosen to put in there. Now rotate the shape and place it as shown. Place it and set the anchor point to the centre and rotate minus 45 degrees. Now you can see on the right hand side there I've got the anchor point right down the bottom there, the square with the dots around it. Make sure you do that first before you try and move the needle otherwise it'll swing around from its end. Select that centre point which anchors the needle at its centre and now you can easily put in minus 45 degrees. Pick the ellipse tool and create a 320 pixel circle. Another one. Fill it with black and center it by the usual methods. Select this new circle along with that needle shape only. Open the edit panel and tap the subtract button. Things should look like in the image. You can see the needle goes in one side and out the other. Very tricky.
Now, pick the pen tool and add two oblique paths where the needle enters and exits the logo, as shown in the following image. Add two ellipses, one for the entry point and one for the exit. Convert them to curves once finished. Make sure they're white. Check and make sure everything else is converted to curves, especially the fonts. And you can see I've got curves, 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 curves all the way up there. Group, which, well, it's a group of curves, isn't it? More curves, an ellipse, and an ellipse, and I haven't converted them to curves yet. That's simple. Go to the Edit tool, Convert to Curves. Job done. Now, here's how it should look. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and can apply these techniques in your future projects. Don't hesitate to share your final results in the comments section or of the Facebook group. Feel free to adjust the final design and make it your own. Of course, you haven't got a tailor company called Silky, so you can put what you like in there and you can move things around. But step by step, that's how you do it. Congratulations. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like. I always appreciate it.